Welcome to Lesson 12D, Design of Parallel Cyclones. We're going to talk about cyclones in parallel and why we might put them in parallel. Pretty much the entire lecture is going to be one big example problem. By introduction, some pictures along the road, if you look around, you'll see small cyclones in parallel a lot of times rather than one big one. In the home, this is a canister from a vacuum cleaner that has, I think, 12 small cyclones instead of one big one. Why do we do this? Well, it's best illustrated by an example, and this is a design example, so this is a real practical application. I'm going to do one big cyclone first, and then I'm going to compare to a bunch of cyclones in parallel to see why there's an advantage. Let's look at this given information. We're designing a lapel cyclone. We have dusty air that needs clean, poly disperse, that means wide variety of particle sizes. We have a particle density, we have a flow rate. And let's just assume air is at SATP. Of course, we know how to calculate rho and mu for other conditions than that. The blower motor unit combined efficiency of 75%. Electricity is 10 cents per kilowatt hour. The regulations that need to be met is we have to remove two and a half micron particles with at least 80% removal efficiency. That's the design parameter that we need to meet. So we're going to design a standard reverse flow cyclone. I have one sketched here. And all we really need to do is calculate D2 because remember all the other dimensions, the inlet and this pipe and all that stuff is based on D2. So if it's a standard LAPL reverse flow cyclone, that's all we need. Once we have that, we can calculate the electrical cost to run this cyclone for a year. And so here's some of the equations that we will use. And we assume that the particles are spherical. So all these equations apply and we have everything we need. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is take this equation and I'm going to analyze this now for one large cyclone. And as I said, I'll repeat this for several cyclones required to do the job. Let's solve this for DP cut because we don't know that. DP cut is the variable that we want to solve for from this equation. And that turns out to be, you can do some algebra, DP cut is equal to DP for any given particle times one minus eta over eta square root. And here, our requirement is that at dp equal 2.5 microns, eta of this dp is 80% or 0 0.80. That's our requirement from given information here in order to meet these regulations. 2.5 micron particles, 80% removal efficiency. So that's what we're going to plug into here. We get dp cut equal, I'll put in my 2.5 microns as my dp and then square root of 1 minus 0 0.80 over 0 0.80. And that turns out to be 1.25 micron is DP cut, right? I didn't ask for DP cut, but that's the DP cut that's required to meet the regulations. So however we do this, whether with one cyclone or many cyclones, we're going to have to have that DP cut. Now let's use this equation to calculate the D2 that's needed. Now that we know DP cut, we can calculate the required size of the cyclone and the power. Let's take this equation and do some algebra to solve for D2. We get D2 is equal to DP cut squared times 128 times pi times Q times rho particle minus rho air over 3 mu and then the whole thing raised to the one third power. That's that same equation solved for D2. And so now let's plug in some numbers. Make sure you watch your units as everybody should know by now. So I changed my DP cut to meters and then all the units cancel out properly. We don't even need any unit conversions with this. And so my answer would be to three digits 0.124 meters. So that is the required D2. You can build the cyclone out of that. With that dimension, you could build everything else. So that's our answer for the size. What about the cost? Well, let's go back to these two equations and I'm gonna put a blue circle around all of these and bring it down here. We need to combine these two equations, these two here, to get one equation for W dot. So the power W dot blower is equal to 2621.44 times rho Q cubed over D to the fourth times eta of the blower. And let's plug in the numbers here also. Again, being careful with units. For example, I had to make sure I put in all the digits of this and I put in the units for all the variables and I end up with 24.3 kilowatts. Then you have to do several unity conversion factors to make this all work out. 
how do we get the cost? This is per year. I have an electricity rate, 0 0.10 per kilowatt hour. So that's kilowatt times hour. So I have the power, 24.314 kilowatts. And I just need to get this into years. So there's 24 hours per day. And counting leap years, 365.25 day per year. So that should get rid of hours and days. And we have dollars. In the end, we end up with dollars per year, which is what we want. I didn't really have an equation. I just made up this equation as I went by units. And sometimes you have to do that. And I get to three digits, $21,300 per year. So that's actually quite expensive, $21,300 per year, just to run the cyclone. That doesn't count buying the cyclone or anything with just electricity to run the thing. This is for one cyclone, one large cyclone. It's actually not that large, only 0.124 meters, 12 centimeters. So it's not very big for this application. So now let's look at the same thing. So just a quick review, the current design is one big Lapple cyclone with all the same specifications that we had before. I just relisted them. And what we got was that with that one cyclone, we had 24.3 kilowatts or $21,300. And so the question is, what can we do to save money on electricity yet still meet all the cleaning requirements. And that's where, as you may have already guessed, we put several smaller cyclones in parallel. I have a sketch here where we have an inlet manifold and we split it into, in this case, four. I'll use M and it's not mass. M equal four parallel smaller cyclones. So M can be anything we want. I just pick four out of the air, give it an illustration. So we have an inlet manifold splits into four and then we have an outlet manifold. So for each one of these, there's particles that are collected down here and the cleaner air comes out. So we have the dirty air coming in with all these particles and then we start collecting them in each of these. There are four identical cyclones so that we can just treat one at a time and then multiply by four when we're done. I want to make a couple other comments. The first comment here is that you have additional minor losses. And if we wanted to do a real exact analysis, we'd have to take those into account. You have a T that I circled there. You have probably some more elbows and pipes, the manifold itself, instead of just one big one in and out. Now we have this manifold and elbows and everything and T's. We are going to ignore for this analysis. It will add a little bit of delta P, but generally delta P for the minor, in this case, they really are minor losses is very small compared to delta P for the cyclones. These cyclones have a huge pressure drop compared to elbows and things like that because of the complex geometry. You speed up the flow and then swirl it around and all that stuff. So let's see if we can save some money, which is always a good thing to do if you can. Let's analyze this for M equal four parallel cyclones. What we're going to do is we keep the overall or total Q the same because all we're doing is replacing this one big cyclone with some Q coming in. Now we have the same Q coming in and Q going out, but for each individual cyclone is Q divided by M per cyclone. So we're going to send only, in this case, one fourth of that Q into each cyclone. And so Q per unit, unit meaning cyclone, is 0 0.111 meter cubed per second divided by four. So this turns out to be 0 0.02775 meter cubed per second per unit. We have the same efficiency requirement, which was 80% at 2.5 micron particles. PM 2.5 is what we're interested in here. So you redo the calculations that we had above. The only thing that really changed is this Q because we still have the same efficiency. We're doing all that same calculations and I'm not going to show that. You can do this for practice. Just repeat everything above except with a different Q and you get a different diameter required and we get 0 0.077812 meters, which is about 1.6 times smaller than the one big cyclone, which remember was 0 0.124 meters for one cyclone. One thing I want you to realize is that this is not the original D2 here divided by four. It's more like a factor of about 1.6. And that's because these equations are certainly not linear. So it's not quite that simple. You got to go through all the calculations again. Okay, now we repeat the calculations for W dot of the blower. And if you work through the algebra yourself, I get 2.412 kilowatt per unit. And we repeat the calculation for the cost. My cost, be careful, is four, and that's because there's four units 
So my cost is going to multiply by four times the same thing I did before then, 10 cents per kilowatt hour. And then we plug in the rest of it. Now we're going to plug in this power, 2.412 kilowatts, and then our conversions. And so I get the cost here when I multiply by that four is 8460 per year. This is for these four in parallel. We've already taken into account that there's four of them. So this is the total electric cost. And just to compare, for one cyclone, cost was 21300 per year. And for four cyclones, the cost turns out to be $8,460 per year. And this is for the same performance. All right. In other words, the air coming out of this cyclone, you can like in your mind put this all in a big box and just have an inlet and an outlet and you don't really know what's going on inside. All you know is you have cleaner air, but that Q coming out will be identical to this Q coming out. And the mass concentration of the particles will be identical as well because we have the same cut diameter. We just happen to split this into four units. So we have the same exact air coming out in each of these cases, but we've saved quite a bit of money. And so that, my friends, is why you see cyclones in parallel a lot of the time. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.